Keenan Alley, ladies and gentlemen. Now, can you please welcome, as we move from father to daughter, the producer and director of the British Curry Awards at the tender age of just 17, but showing brilliant organisational skills and looking stunning tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Justine Alley! Oh my God, what am I doing here? I'm so nervous. Forgive me if I get my words in the wrong order. It was bad enough last year when I was only looking after the charity side of things. But it's even worse now because I've taken on the challenge to produce and direct the whole show. So if you hear a knocking noise, it'll be me being nervous. Good evening, lords, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how I got myself into this position. Well, actually I do. For the last three years, I've seen the show come together in great amazement. And so I took the opportunity as a learning experience for myself. Fortunately, I have had tremendous support and courage from the industry as a whole. I have also had great support from my mother and my father and huge support from the British Curry Awards team. In particular, Mohammed, Laurie and his crew who I'd like to thank because without them, I know I would have been lost. It hasn't been easy juggling the demands of this event with my college work, and I know some people at my college may have thought I was up to no good, taking a few days off here and there. But one or two of them are here tonight, so hopefully they'll be able to vouch for the fact I haven't been skiving. This is my first time directing a show, so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that I don't make any mistakes, but if I do, please do forgive me. My father always said, the word impossible is never found in the dictionary of food. He said, if you come across a wall and you find it difficult to cross, you break this wall and you rebuild it, but make it even better. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Inam Ali, not as my father, but for his tremendous contribution he has dedicated. He has religiously dedicated himself to the spice industry and is a role model to us youngsters. As many of you will know, each year we nominate a charity to benefit from the proceeds of the collection we make for the British Curry Awards. Last year it was a Bangladesh floods appeal and I went there recently to hand over the money on your behalf. I was only there for four days but I can honestly say that was the most emotional experience of my life. But I was also intense, it was also intensely rewarding. I shall never forget the beaming smiles on the children's faces I met, many of whom had been orphaned by the floods. Their lives may have been crushed, but their spirit remained strong as ever. It was really exuberating to spend time with them. It made me realise just how important the charity aspect of this evening really is. While we are able to sit in these magnificent surroundings, rightly congratulating achievements, there are millions of people there who are still suffering. So, I hope you'll show your usual generosity by digging deep into your wallets to support this year's nominated charity, the James Whale Fund for Kidney Cancer. Here to tell you a little bit more about how you can help the man himself, LBC broadcaster, Mr. James Wales. a lovely speech. You're making me nervous. <laughs> and after watching some of the scenes that you saw in Bangladesh, it makes me actually just feel a little insignificant to come up and talk about my charity. Before I do that, I am just going to say a few words about your dad, all right? Because your dad is a great man. And he, his family has been touched by the same cancer that I've had, and I'm not going to go into that now. Uh, but I'm sure that at some stage he may. Enan Ali and people like Enan have done more to bring different races together in this country than any of the politicians, as far as I can see. And I think all of you here who probably do more to mix cultures than anyone else in this country should give yourselves a round of applause now, because I think you deserve it. Because I think 
that more people than <coughs> we can expect realise that they share a culture and they share the culture of food. And you know, for people who have cancer, it's not nearly as bad, let me tell you, as it is for those people uh, who have to live with someone who has cancer. My wife, Melinda, down there has done more uh, for me than anyone else, and I can assure you it is much more difficult for her than it is for me. Because I didn't realize until the, the cancer affected me just how important charities can be. Charities that give people a focal point so that they have somewhere to go when they need help and understanding. Our charity is very small. One of the reasons, of course, it, it only affects very few people. So I implore you tonight, please uh, give as much as you can afford. The envelopes are on the tables in front of you. I'd like to invite a friend of mine, an incredibly well-known uh, well friend of mine. I'm not, I like to think of myself, the name of my new book, of course, almost a celebrity. You didn't think I'd get a plug-in, did you? Was that good? That is good. Um, everybody knows he's king of the jungle. He's king of entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Christopher Biggins. Everybody well? Oh, good. Now, I'm the right side now, aren't I? Yeah. Yes, that's good. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do now, the, the, this is for the, the James Will Fund for uh, Kidney Cancer. Now, James has been a friend of mine for years, so I'm thrilled to come along tonight to raise some money. Now, what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to tell you what the, the draw is. The, the, the grand prize draw is a fantastic prize. The National Television Awards are taking place on the 29th of October at the Royal Albert Hall in London. The red carpet event is hosted by Sir Trevor MacDonald, broadcast live on ITV1, and features a host of stars on the small screen, a glamorous evening not to be missed. So, the prize includes four tickets to the ceremony, a fabulous dinner pre-event, a chauffeur-driven car to the ceremony, which will collect you and whisk you back to your luxury hotel, where you will have two double rooms for an overnight stay. Isn't this exciting? Now, the way you can do this draw is uh, it's quite simple. Now, first of all, I would like to have the most attractive person on every table stand up. Now, this could be a man or a woman. The most attractive, now come along. Look, people are pushing people, shoving. Come on, sir, stand up with the moustache. Come on, up you get. There we are, well done, sir. Gentlemen standing up there. Nobody's standing up over there, come on. Gorgeous lady down here. There was a fight going on between you two down there. It was very embarrassing. Right, very important. So what you do is you individually put the money into this envelope or the credit card number. Then our beautiful team captains will go and collect from everybody. And later, don't sit down yet, madam. I haven't finished with you. Up you get. And we'll later come and collect your envelopes. Thank you so much for being so good. And I hope someone wins this fantastic Wonderful prize. Thank you very much indeed. I would like to thank Christopher Biggins and James Wales. All I have left to say is thank you and I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. It gives me great pleasure in introducing my co-host for this evening from BBC's Dead Ringers programme, Mr John Coleshaw. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's have a round of applause and thanks for Christopher Biggins and James Whale, first of all. Let's hear it for Christopher and James. And let us have a magnificent, huge round of applause for Justine. Justine, you were superb. Thank you for your beautiful speech and thank you for producing and directing the entire show. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a joy to work with so far. Thank you so much. Let's hear it one more time for Justine. Thank you so much. Thank you.